I always loved the Feast of Epiphany, and in my last parish, it was usually marked by a children's pageant. The occasion when the younger children in the parish would act out the Christmas story for the congregation. Every year, when the notice asking for volunteers for the pageant appeared in the bulletin, the children would rush to sign up for the different parts, hoping for the main roles, Mary or Joseph. One year, Simon and Joss, who were identical twins, were keen to be one of the kings and were pleased when they were chosen to do so. On the day of the pageant, they played their roles so well, they almost stole the show from Mary and Joseph. Needless to say, the organizers, their parents, and, their, and the congregation were pleased with their performance. The twins were so excited and happy, they wore their capes and crowns all during mass. Their mood quickly changed when a teenager who noticed their happiness told them there was no star and no kings visited baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Immediately, the twins rushed to me and asked if the story was true or not. Without telling them that the author of the Gospel of Matthew, who wanted to include all the Hebrew scripture prophecy about the Messiah, was trying to help the early Christian community to understand that Jesus was a blessing for the whole world. I told the boys they were asking the wrong question. The significance of the story in today's gospel is found when we asked ourselves, what does it mean? And what is it saying to us? I'm reminded of, of the line from the book, The Little Prince, where the fox shares a simple secret with the prince who was looking for truth and meaning in his life. It is only with the heart that one sees rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Today, you and I are asked to look at the epiphany of the Lord with the eyes of our heart, to see how the glory of God, the light and truth of God, has found a place in our world and in our hearts. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. God reveals the mystery of divine presence to us in ways that we can understand and appreciate. In the ordinary living out of our lives, we realize that God is with us and has blessed us. First, with the gift of creation. To know why there is being and not nothingness, to know that there is a God who delights in making being be is the first step in seeing all things sacramentally. Even in our brokenness, we are able, precisely through the prism of sacrament, to see and thus to receive the world as the handiwork of a good and generous God. The second, with the gift of life and faith. What a miracle human beings are, each one precious and unique in God's sight, filled with a goodness and a spirit that reflects the divine life of the creator who has made everything and everyone out of love. As we come to appreciate this gift, we also become profoundly aware that the journey of life is also a journey of faith. We understand that we come from God and our whole being, life, is a journey back to the one who has created us. It is a gift that should always fill our hearts with wonder and praise. Third, with the gift of time. Each day is a miracle filled with new beginnings. You know, every morning when I open my eyes, I give thanks to God. I say, God, thank you for another day. Help me to live it well, in union with you and all the people I will meet this day. I pray I will not be judgmental or critical or negative others. Help me to find the truth and beauty in everyone and in everything. Sadly, 
So often we are busy living the future, we fail to appreciate the present moment in a way that allows our goodness and the divine spirit to guide us on the journey of the day. For the gift of the other, our family, friends, and community, all those people who walk mysteriously in our lives and awaken good in us we never knew existed. We are not meant to be alone. Our relationships and connections with others is an important way to come to know and love God. As we respond to the word and spirit alive in our hearts, we come to live the mystery that all people are members of the same body and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Too often, we take these gifts for granted and resist the word calling us to a new way of life. As God seekers, let us be attentive to all the ways that God reveals and blesses us on every step of our journey, especially in the dark moments of our lives. It is amazing how a little light in the dark can overcome our fears and doubts. It reminds me of a time when I went hunting with my friend in the fall in the Yukon. And we got to our hunting spot and we decided to split up in order to have a better chance to, to see a moose. And off I went, found a nice spot, and I sat there waiting. And it grew dark, very dark, to the point where every noise, I started to find myself jumping, saying, what was that? And I remember as I suddenly realized I needed to head back to the camp wandering in the dark. But when I saw the fire of the, camp, uh, of the campfire, everything changed, you know? <laughs> my fears were gone. My, my sense of my surroundings were very different. And I think in some ways, the light that the Epiphany shares with us today does the same. It overcomes our fears, our doubts. And that little light that keeps shining, keeps us walking in faith walking in love, walking in hope. As we celebrate the Feast of Epiphany, may we recognize the revelation of Emmanuel. May God's light and truth lead us on our journey of life and help us to live the unity and oneness God has created in all the ways that overcome the darkness of our world. Today, I wish all of you a blessed new year. May God overwhelm you with goodness, truth, and love. Take care. Stay safe.